God comes through strong on the behalf of his people. We know that as we spend time in God's presence, we are just like Obedidom, amen, that we'll receive the blessings that the Lord has for us. I hope that somebody's ready and understands that their God is good. Amen. Today we're going to pray, and before we do so, we're going to talk very briefly about giftings or our gifts that God has for us. Um, how many of us know that our God is a good God? I know he's a good God. I know that God has been good to me. I know that only he is good. I know that the Bible says that every good and every perfect gift comes from him, from above. And the Father of lights in whom there's no shadow of turning, old King James says. It means that as God gives a gift, he doesn't change his mind. He doesn't turn his back. And how many of us know, I'm always using an analogy of a, an inventor. So if you've heard it before, forgive me. Um, Paul says, to remind you of something you already know is not grievous. So how many of us know that? Have you ever seen an inventor who makes something without a purpose? Have you ever seen that? No inventor. Anytime somebody invents something, it may not make sense to you unless the person has explained it to you. But to them, they had something in mind when they were making it. And I know that when God was creating you and I, he had in there a plan. Let me hear somebody say a plan. He had a plan and a purpose. And because he's made us in his own image and in his likeness, he, we know that we are just like him. And we know that God is full of wonders and amazement and full of wonderful giftings. Anything we need in God, we find in him. His name is the I am that I am. And the I am that I am means a blank check. What that means is that it, just imagine somebody is giving you a blank check and written at the top, Pedro Theophosuari, and have signed the end. Basically, as they give it to me, I say, praise the Lord. And the person says to me, write any amount that you want in there. Now, no matter how much an amount that I write in there, when I present it to the bank, the bank is under obligation to make sure that they pay me that amount. And that's how our God is. As he is referred to as I am that I am, he gives you and I a blank check. But just like he's full of wonders and amazement, he does us also. We know that he's a good God. We know that, I think the most famous verse in, uh, in the Bible is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave, and he gave his only begotten son, which is the Lord Jesus that you and I worship and imitate and look to. And Jesus Christ is a gift to you and I. Because we have him, we have everything. God gave of himself um, in, in Jesus. And so... God, as he made you and I, he made us to be gifts. We're also gifts to him and also gifts to one another. We're also gifts to the body of Christ. And so God made nobody in this world useless. You are not useless and neither am I. He has a plan and a purpose for us. Today we're going to pray concerning the gift that God has given us. We want to pray and thank him for the gift that we are. And we want to pray that this gift that God has given us will make room for us. It will make sure that it works on our behalf and that we may be a blessing for the body of Christ. Those of you writing notes, if you read 1 Corinthians 12, um, from 12 talks about spiritual gifts. It's a, Paul writes and he says, that, well, I don't want to make you people, um, the Corinthians he's writing to, um, ignorant about the gifts that God has given you. And he talks about the different types of gifts and how the different types of service and all of that. He talks about spiritual gifts. Also, as he talks about spiritual gifts, he also talks about other types of gifts. And so he talks about gifts of administration and helps and all of that. Each one of us, God has equipped with a spiritual gift and also a gift that can allow us to move in the world also. So as well as we have spiritual gifts, we have non-spiritual gifts also. And I want to encourage each one of us that if we don't know what that gifting is, we need to look out for it because God makes us for a plan and a purpose. Every single one of us, as we live, we must understand that we are blessing for somebody else. We must not live a life that's insular, all about ourselves. That everything that God gives us is also able to bless other people and also must make room for us. Romans 18:16. Romans 18, 16 says this. A gift opens the way and ashes the giver into the presence of the great. King James says that your gift will make room for you. And I think he goes on to say that it will allow you to appear, not before mere men, 
not before mean men, some people say, but before kings and queens. And so God is talking to us in Roman Proverbs that the gift that he's given you is not just for you to utilize it for yourself, but he can also allow it to become a promotion for you. The gift will benefit you as well as other people. And so today that's what we're going to pray about. And to understand that each one of us, we have a plan and a purpose, number one. We want to thank God for the gift that he's given us and that we are a gift to the body. And so we know, for example, that our apostle, Pastor Shadrach, and many a time you probably observe that when I pray, we pray for Pastor Shadrach, I would use this term, thank you for the gift. Because Pastor Shadrach and your pastor and people that are over you and the people over, in authority over you, particularly your spiritual father, is a gift from God to you. He's a gift from God. Because anytime God wants to bless you, he's going to use that gift to bless you. Let me hear somebody say amen. amen. And so, Pastor Shadrach is a gift. In there, God has embodied all the fivefold ministry, everything that you need to grow as a child of God, and he's placed it in this man. So, he's a gift. And so, not only the Pastor Shadrach he can be a gift for you, but the gift that God, or the giftings that God has placed in him and can also benefit him. And Proverbs 18 says, he opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. When you carry a gift and you are a gift, number one, you must understand that you are a gift. You must also understand that because you are a gift, you must also give. And so whatever blessing that God has placed in you, whether it's a spiritual gift to prophesy. The Bible says, for example, that prophecy is for the edification of the church. So if somebody's a prophet and all they're concerned about is prophesying for themselves, trying to know how they're, 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 me, myself, and I, how they themselves can prosper, but not anybody else, then there's a challenge there, right there. And so that person, if you like, is not a good prophet because prophecy is for the edification of the church. So the prophet must understand that I am there so that the church might benefit from this gift that I carry. The one who is able to lay hands on the sick and for healing to come must understand that I need to go out there and be a blessing. So if I know that I've got a gift of healing, when I see somebody who's sick, I must do what? Lay hands on them and make sure that God uses me as a gift to bless that particular person. Amen. And so that's what I'm here to do today, just to encourage each one of us. And so we must understand that the gift that God has given us, number one, is for other people. It can also make room for us. Now, I want us to turn to Daniel chapter um, 2. We're going to read from verse 46 to 49, and then we're going to start praying. Because we want to encourage the giftings that God has for the church. Um, 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 how many of us know that the church, like Pastor said, I've always, when I read the scripture concerning um, when um, um, Peter was arrested, Remember when Peter was in jail? The Bible said that the church came together and they decided to pray. One of the first times when I read that chapter, it suddenly dawned on me that it's very important for the church to pray. Because we realized that what happened was James, as Pastor keeps telling us, James was abducted, if you like. He was arrested, he was beaten, and he was killed. The church was just sitting by while this happened. I'm sure, um, um, not to, to, what do you call it, talk too badly of them. They must have thought, oh, God is in control. You know, sometimes we say things like that. Oh, God is in control. I don't need to pray. And so they watched the events unfold. And before they knew it, he was killed. Wow, how did that happen? Why would that happen? I'm sure they were shocked. They were surprised. They were confused, wondered. Did God could have come through? How come God did not come through? So the next time we hear, Peter was arrested. Now, when Peter was arrested, the church suddenly came to the senses and thought, we cannot sit by, idly by and watch Peter go down the pan the same way that James did. So the Bible said that the church came together and they started to pray. They locked themselves in a room, meaning that, showing that they meant business. So I should imagine 24-7, they were just praying, God inter intervene, intervene, intervene. And as they kept praying and praying and praying, they locked the door. So that meant that they meant business. Nobody was coming out or going in. I don't know how long they were there. But they were just praying intensely that God come through for Peter. But as God would have it, as, or as the Bible says, the, a miracle came through. Peter was in jail. All of a sudden, <laughs> an angel appeared. And as, uh, the first automatic door happened there and then. 
The Bible said he just walked through, the gates opened, and the automatic door happened. I'm sure the guy that invented the automatic door read that scripture and said to himself, I wonder how I can also do that. A <laughs> gift, amen. And so anyway, so Peter, the Bible said that they were just there in that room, and Peter turns up at the door, knocks on the door, and a little girl Rhoda goes to open the door and says, Peter's at the door. They're like, what, what are you talking about? But I'm sure after that incident, the church understood and realized that when they come together and pray, miracles happen. And it's a very important that we come together. Anytime we come together and pray, we must be expecting that miracles must happen. And the church must be built on the giftings that God has made available to us. Because of time, we won't read 1 Corinthians 12. Go and look at it. There's a scripture that says, how be when we come together, one as a psalm, one as a hymn, and all of these things. When we come together, all of these things build us to bring us to the level that God has. And that is talking about gifting. The one who has a psalm, the one who has a prayer, the one who has a hymn. All these are different types of giftings. So as we put it together, God's name is glorified and the church grows and expands and God's will is done. And this is all about giftings. And so it is important that as we come together today to pray, I know for sure that by the end of it, all the giftings of the Spirit will be released to us. Amen, number one. And all the giftings that we need in order to advance ourselves in the world will also be re released to us. And just like Proverbs said, it will make room for us so that we may prosper and so that favor will come our way. Amen. The book of Daniel, Daniel gives <clears throat> an account of um, Daniel and his friends about how in the time of Israel they went into Babylon for captivity and Daniel was one of them. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of um, Babylon, uh, Babylon decided that he would go into Israel and take the very best. <coughs> and as he went into Israel, he looked for people that were of royal descent, or who were nobles, people who could basically help him build his kingdom. And Daniel was one of them. And the Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 1 about how God gave to Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And then Bible continues by saying, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Daniel did not conjure up, as it were, the gift of understanding vision and dreams, but God gave it to him. Because when God made Daniel, he decided that he would give him a gift that will make him understand visions and dreams. In the same manner, as God made you, he decided that he would give you the gift that you carry. Because he knows best and he knows that his kingdom must expand. So whatever it is that you know you have, what you don't know you have, understand that God has given it to you. Even if you don't understand that you have a gift, know that he's given it to you. So today, if you don't know that you have a gift, you're going to pray so that it will come to your knowledge what gifting you have. Excuse me. Hallelujah. So anyway, so Daniel was endowed with such giftings that he could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Today, in the same manner, like I've already said, God has given that to you. When we skip to, uh, to uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 46 to 49, we're still talking about uh, King uh, Nebuchadnezzar and um, Daniel and his encounters with Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible tells us that one day Nebuchadnezzar went and he slept and he had a dream. But when he had this dream, he got up and decided that he would call all the wise men of the land, all of these people that could interpret dreams and the, the, what the, the, the veiners and all of those people that could understand spiritual things. But as he called them, I know it doesn't make any sense, but God was orchestrating and bringing something to pass so that Daniel could be promoted. And our God is a God who always orchestrates so that promotion will come your way. He sets us up always for a promotion. The devil is a bad devil. We know that. And the devil's job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So the devil will always orchestrate, put you in a position where you will be disgraced. But not so with your God and my God. Anytime God organizes, that's why the scriptures say all things work together for good. For those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. Do you love the Lord? Let me see somebody who loves the Lord. I know I do. So if you love the Lord, and who, how many of us are called? Okay, you guys are good. 
Sometimes, many a times when they say, oh, I received a calling, then we think, well, I'm not a pastor. So if I'm not a pastor, I haven't been called. It's, 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 it's um, um, what do you call it? It's infused in this word that we're talking about. So long as God has called you, so long as you're a child of God, he's called you. So long as you're a child of God, you are blessed. So long as you're a child of God, you have a gift because he didn't make you useless. Amen. So long as you're a child of God, you are his ambassador. You're a channel of his love and his peace. So he wants to use you and he will use you. As we spend time in God's presence this year, by the end of this year, each one of us, God would have used mightily to his glory. Everybody's gifting will be sharpened. Everybody would be, would be so sharpened that wherever we go, people will start to look at us and say, there's something about you. And that's because you've been able to cultivate the gifting that God has given you. No matter what the gift is. Because God loves variety, each one of us, I, I'm always saying to you, I just wish I could sing. I always wish I could sing. From when I was a child, I wished I could sing. But unfortunately, I don't sing. But just because I don't sing doesn't mean that God doesn't use me. I think maybe it would be better if I could sing. But God has made somebody else to sing. And he's made somebody else to speak. Either which way, God's name will be glorified. And so it is immature of us. And so I want to take this opportunity that sometimes we have certain giftings. We know we have that gift. But as far as we're concerned, that's not a proper gift. But we want to do something else. You know, there's a saying that the grass is always greener on the other side. Saints, I'm here to announce you, God knows best. He knows best and he knows all things. And the secret things belong to him. He knows, he knows me and he made me after his image. And he knew why he didn't make me to sing. It's very probable that maybe if I sang and I, everybody was giving me accolades, maybe I might develop, you know, hairs, hairs and graces and wings and decide that I would not even talk to anybody but maybe just sing all the time. Maybe I wouldn't be a vessel that he could use. But he could use me in another way. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So whatever gift that God has called you and equipped you with, it's about time you sharpened it instead of looking at somebody else's. Many a time, those, especially those of us in, in church in the background, we always think to ourselves, ah, you know, I'm not standing there holding the microphone, so God hasn't called me. That's not true. That's a lie of the devil. He wants to tell you that you're not effective. But every good and every perfect gift comes from above. All you need to do is to give yourself to God so that he might use you to his glory. The Bible says in the house, there are lots of vessels. There's some that are vessels of honor. There are vessels that, that you know, just like in, in the house, there are certain things you hide away, right? You just hide it and just hope that nobody sees it. It's a bit like, you know, sometimes if you wanted to quickly clean your bedroom and people are coming or in your, you've got a cupboard. You just shove everything in the cupboard knowing that nobody's going to walk into your house or go into your cupboard, right? So you just quickly put everything away, especially, you know, the young ones, even your mom says to you, clean your bedroom. You shove everything under the bed and then you put it in the cupboard, close the door, and as soon as somebody walks in, so that looks very perfect. You don't want your gift to be something that you yourself have shoved in the cupboard. That's no use. But rather, you should be the gift that is, when we look at it, just like, you know, when you, you, you've got like a, a mantelpiece, something that you put on display. So if you yield yourself to God, use your gift to God, then you'll be the one that is put on display, that God can display and say, this is my gift. Look at how that gift is working so beautifully to my glory. Amen. And so, um, Nebuchadnezzar was able to pick out these young ones because they were sharp, and Daniel and his four friends were one of them. But as um, Nebuchadnezzar uh, had this dream, you would think to yourself, why would he do that? Because God was orchestrated so that Daniel and his friends might be promoted. I came here to prophesy to somebody that all things work together for your good. Because you love the Lord and you're called according. Every single thing will work together for you good because you are in Christ. Amen. Joseph said to his brothers, I love that scripture. He said to his brothers after he finally revealed himself, he said, you meant it for evil, but God turned it around for good. 
And he was projecting himself there and then, Joseph, was prophesying into that scripture in Romans 8, that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. No matter what happens, God will always orchestrate so that a promotion will come your way. So no matter what you're going through right now, the situation you're going through, it may look bad, it may look dim, it may look dark, but be rest assured, he's only setting you up for a promotion. Amen. So Nebuchadnezzar makes an edict and decrees that, look, somebody should come. Not only do I want you, I don't want you to interpret the dream, but I want you to t- tell me the dream and then interpret it. A double whammy. Trouble don't come up. So these guys were trying, they were biding time. Even in Nebuchadnezzar said, I can see what you people are doing. You're trying to distract me. But after that, nobody could do it. So the edict went out that now let's kill all these wise men. Now, if you remember, the Bible said that God had given Daniel an ability to interpret visions and dreams. And so Daniel was, was, if you like, engrafted into those people who are going to be killed because he could understand visions and dreams. And so Daniel would have been one of those people. And so eventually when he got to hear about it, he asked, why would the king want to kill uh, people like that? And the guy explains to him. So Daniel goes to the king and he says, King, just give me some time. Let me go and wait on the Lord. Somebody needs to go to their boss and say to their boss, give me some time. Let me go and wait on the Lord. Sometimes a situation in your workplace may be there so that God might promote you. Amen. You were due a promotion as you spend time in God's presence. So when things are going pear-shaped in your workplace, don't just sit on the fence. I inquire, what's going on? Is there something I can do to help? Go, it says, give me, give me a few days, I'll get back to you. And so as the Bible says, the Bible says that Daniel went and he, he, um, he, he went and prayed to God. And so this is where we join the scripture. When you go home, you can read the whole book of Daniel, not very um, long. It would be very good, you know, to go over the scripture. It is very, very important. Then after um, um, Daniel came, he gives um, um, Nebuchadnezzar the dream and the interpretation. Because the God that you and I serve, there is nothing that is hidden from him. The Bible says, if you lack wisdom, you should ask of him. And he's the one that gives you, but he gives it in abundance and overflow. That's your portion in Jesus' name. Any situation that you find yourself in that you don't know what to do, stop asking everybody. Sometimes we ask so much that even we get confused. I think you should do it that way. I think you should do it that way. I think you should do it that way. I think you get so confused. You're asking your friend, your neighbor, your enemy, the man on the street, what do you think I should do? I mean, why do you put yourself in that situation where you've got a king of kings, the Lord strong and mighty, the one who is wisdom himself? Amen. Ask God. And then you can seek counsel. Of course you can. You have your pastor. Go ask your pastor. But don't confuse yourself, wasting your time, as it were, asking other people's opinions. What do you think I should do? Oh, I think you should go and do the, oh, okay. Come and ask me. Oh, I think you should do B. Should I go or should I come? If I go, maybe trouble, or next if I stay, it'll be double. You're getting yourself confused. But as Daniel said, give me a few moments, he went into his closet to ask of God. And I release that unction upon us in the name of Jesus, that we will know exactly where to go and go straight into our closet. But when we go into our closet, we know that our God is a God who answers prayers. Amen. God invites us. As we spend time in his presence, it's an invitation to spend time with him. Soon as he's giving you that invitation, you know he's ready to answer. And what does he say in his word? You know, pastor's teaching us here at Welling about the Lord's Prayer. When he preached on Sunday, when he finished the, the summation of it all was do what? Just ask. The way to him is open. Just ask. The Lord's prayer is about asking. As we commune with him, we just keep asking. Let's ask. Ask and keep on asking. The Lord, he who asks, the Lord, the answer will be given. And so we've got all of those uh, uh, things available to us. Let's utilize it. And so that's what Daniel did. And he went in and asked God. And God gave him the dream and gave him the interpretation. So after he had been to Nebuchadnezzar, verse 46, then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor 
and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego administrators over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. Let me hear somebody say amen. Today we're going to pray concerning our giftings, concerning this unction that Daniel carried. Now the gift that he had, as he utilized the gift, you will notice this. He says that because before that the king has said that whoever is able to do this, this is how I'm going to bless him. And after the king had felt prostrate before Daniel, he paid him honor and he said he ordered an offering and incense to be presented to him. He didn't end it there. After he had praised his God, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Praise went to God. And then he says, then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon. Promotion does not come from man, but it comes from God. It does not come from the south, the east, nor west. But as we spend time in God's presence, God is setting us up for promotion. I, I hope somebody's understanding us. He's setting us up for promotion. But one of the ways you can experience promotion is by allowing your gift to work for us. Many of us are despising the gifting that God has given us. We're spending time, like I've said already, looking at somebody else's gift. Spending time chasing other, other things instead of sharpening the gift that God has given us. Instead of concentrating, seeing how God may use us. We're spending time looking at other people. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a this. I'm not a that. But the natural gift that God has given you, you're not utilizing. It's very possible that maybe you're very friendly. You talk a lot. How about going about talking to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. How about encouraging people? The Bible says concerning uh, is it Barnabas, his name was not even that. They said that he, they gave him the name son of encouragement because all he did was he encouraged people. They changed his name. The disciples just called him encouragement. Wherever he went, they'll just call him encouragement. That's not the name his mom and dad gave him. But that's because he was such an encourager that it became his name. That was the gift that God gave him. And it made room for him. It allowed him to prosper. Many a time, we're not accessing God's blessings. Because what God has called us to do, we are not doing it. Sometimes we, we kind of, God has called it, all I want you to do is to encourage somebody, but you're not doing it. And so the blessing and the reward that is connected to that gift of encouragement, you're not accessing it. All I want, all I want you to do is, is, to, is to clean the house of the Lord. All I want you to do is to, is to go ahead and, and hack people. All I want you to, no matter how small it is, I want you to smile at people. I want you to sing. I want you to speak the gospel. I want you to stand as a child of God. So whatever it is, this visions and dreams, interpreting of vision of dreams, I want you to prophesy. Some of us, we, we pray so much, God, give me the ability to prophesy. But meanwhile, maybe God has given you a word, but you don't even open your mouth. How is it going to come? We're not operating telepathy. The person is not going to know. Come to your pastor and say, God, this is what I, I, I've received, or this is the word of God. Come and have a conversation. Of course, you don't just get up and talk anyhow. You need to be guided. Go and look for the one that will guide you. You're in the house of the Lord. That's why you have pastors. That's why you have apostles. You have teachers, people who will guide you in the gifting. Just because the gift, you, you know, just because you may go wrong doesn't mean that you shouldn't exercise your gift. Rome was not built in a day. Any great person that you see out there that you admire, any gifting that you have that you admire, you look to, if you go and speak to that person, they will tell you, I was not born like that. They took their time to sharpen that particular gift. But so today we're going to pray that just like Daniel's gift, because of the gift that God gave him, he did not allow it to go dormant. He could have said to himself, well, I'm an Israelite and now I'm in Babylon. And not only am I in Babylon, I'm in captivity. Not only am I in captivity, but I'm in captivity to a king who's the most wicked king, a human being who ever lived. 
But you notice that Daniel was able to still exercise his gift regardless of the environment in which he was in. Now you are now, you may be in a hostile environment or you may not be. Most of the time we are blessed that we're in this country. In this country, you can preach the gospel freely. There are many people who are dying, who are being persecuted, who are being, you, losing their lives, literally because of the gospel. But we are free to prosper as it were. And so the gift that God has given us, we must use it to build the church, Freedom Center International. Whatever it is, no matter how small it is, no matter how minute we think it is, because God who knows all things, the giver of life, the sustainer of life has given that gift to you. Amen. Who knows all things. And every good and every perfect gift comes from God. And so the gifting that we have today, the spiritual and the non-spiritual, which will be the natural tendencies that we have, we must use it to God's glory. If we know computing, let's come to the house of the Lord. Let's design flyers. Let's do computing. Let's make sure that the house of the Lord is built with the gift that we have. Amen. So whatever it is that we have. And so when Daniel did not sit on his gift, the time came that even though he was faced with death, he still didn't say, ha, ah, God, look at what you've done to me. I didn't ask to be a prophet. Oh, now look, I have to go and prophesy. Now it's come to my detriment. Sometimes it's very possible that in using that gift, maybe somebody may misinterpret. Somebody might say, you know, this and that. And then you say to yourself, well, I was only trying to be nice that I usually do. I was only trying to give. But when I gave to that person, rather they turned their back on me and how I insulted me. Giving is a gift. You know that. Giving is a gift. <laughs> so some people, our ability to give is a gift from God. He just makes us, he gives you that gift so that you can be a blessing to the body. So all you do is give. You give, you give, you give, you give. And that's a gift that Tabitha had. All she was doing was giving, making sure that the women in the house were looked after. That's a gift. Now, if Tabitha had said to herself, oh, I tell you what, I've given to one, two, three. Do you suppose, I, I know I wasn't there, but do you suppose all those women were grateful? I don't suppose so. I'm sure some of them took the giftings and went and sold it. I'm sure some of them took it and insulted and said, ah, who does she think she is? I'm sure even when she died, they must have thought, ah, yeah, she's the only one. But this same gift made sure that she did not stay dead, but she resurrected. Only a few people were resurrected in, in the Bible, and she was one of them because of her gift that made room for her to prosper. And so it is very important that we do not neglect the giftings that God has given us, but rather we should sharpen it. We should pray that God, give me the ability. When the opportunity comes, let me exercise it. Even though sometimes it may be to our disadvantage. Sometimes, like I've already said, Daniel, it would look like when he heard that his heart must have gone boom. Hey, I didn't ask to be a prophet. I didn't ask for me to see things and understand visions. So just because I understand visions and dreams now, I find myself in this predicament. But yet still, he still turned his face to God and said, God, give me the interpretation. Amen. Regardless of how people respond, it is very important that we train ourselves to understand that everything that we do, we do to the glory of God. So whether we get um, encouragement or not, we must still do what God has called us to do. So that that gift will make room for us, just like Proverbs said. It will bring us before kings and queens. It will make sure that our mouths are satisfied with good things. Amen. It will make sure that doors will open for us. It will make sure that because of just what we were doing will end up in the place where God has positioned for us. Because that gift will be the one that will set us up for a promotion. You know that the Bible says that and Philip was preaching somewhere else. But that gift of evangelism, that gift of speaking the word, was able to make room for him when in Ethiopia and all that area. So I'm praying, we're praying today, that every gift that God has given us, we're not going to allow it to lie dormant. Today we're going to revitalize the giftings. Amen. We're going to prove fan it into flame. The Bible says, I think Paul writing to Timothy, he says, fan into flame the prophetic word that was given you where hands were laid on you by, uh, by the presbytery. As the words were spoken over your life, don't let it die out. Whatever gift that we have, let's not let it die out. But today by prayer, we're going to fan it into flames so that this church will prosper because we are a movement and a movement we must. So every single body, whatever gifting we have, we must all 
bring it to the table and we must utilize it. If everybody is doing what God has called them to do, we'll fit in tightly together and the body will expand. And when you go home, read 1 Corinthians 12 because that's what he's talking about. He says, if the hand says that I am no longer part of the body, what's going to happen to the body? If the eye says, oh, I'm not. So that's what Paul is saying, that every single one of us is important. So as we sing in, in, in Sunday school, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So we must resolve to ourselves today that whatever light that we have, whatever light that we carry, we should ensure that it shines in whichever corner that we find ourselves. You want to rise with me as we begin to pray into this word. And so number one, you're going to pray, thank you, Lord, that you have given me a gift. If you're not sure, whatever your gift is, you're, as we're praying, you want, let's pray it through. After service, you can come. Let's have a chat where we can talk about it. But whatever it is that you find yourself to do, be faithful doing it. You want to make sure that you don't discourage yourself. Don't allow other people to discourage you either. But whatever you find yourself doing in the house of the Lord, be faithful. Be faithful doing it. Whatever you find yourself doing outside, here, let's carry that same gifting out there so that it will make room for us, so that we will prosper in all that we do. Whatever you put your hand to do will prosper prosper. Whatever you put your hand to do will prosper in Jesus' name. And whatever you declare will come to pass. But God is looking for those of us who will serve him faithfully. Faithfully. The Bible says if you put your hand into the plow and withdraw it, you're not fit for the kingdom. But those of us that diligently seek him, the Lord will reward. You want to lift up your voice in thanksgiving, number one, for the gift that you have. Number two, you want to pray that God continue to use me in that particular area of that gifting. If you're operating below par, say, Lord, help me give me the strength to come above then number three you're gonna pray the Lord let me be in the right place at the right time because I know God you are orchestrating events so that I will be promoted let me be like Daniel so that honor the wealth of Daniel who was if you like just a, a, an ordinary boy serving he became a prince if you like he became a governor of the whole of Babylon not only was he he didn't go by himself he also said to Nebuchadnezzar can you please promote my, my friends and promotion he did not just come to him but he also extended to those that so let that be your portion as you get promoted not just for you but for your family for your friends for your church let your promotion Paul said reign that we may reign with you so whatever way that you are reigning you reign with your church you reign with your family you reign with your friends and all those who are connected to you let the blessings begin to extend and go to your descendants so that the blessing that you receive will not remain with you, but to your children's children. I want somebody to lift up your voice as we pray.